Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of The OC Show. My name is Peter. This is Tim. This is episode 20. First things first, there will be a Q&A. Yeah, like every week, Peter, there will be a Q&A. So next Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S., and that will be October 18th. So we're going to take your questions if you have any questions about what happens, especially probably the HOT, and uh, we'll see what else comes up until then. Yeah, uh, would it would be cool to have maybe JB on for it. I'm just out. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, it's, um, um, so let's dig in straight into the OC Esports stuff. It's been a relatively calm week so far. Most of the challenger divisions have closed. The team club closed as well. The last round of the old school is best school also closed. So what's going on? Uh, well, let's go to bed. There's nothing going on. No, <laughs> actually, there's uh, some Not stuff going you. on. <laughs> the, so the rookie rumble number 23 is going on at the moment. Uh, we've got uh, Segerar from Ukraine with 128 points in the lead, followed by NCN underscore MD from Portugal, which we will find later on again, with 93 points. And uh, Mike J C L M. we discussed uh, before the show how we pronounce this nickname. So if you know, please tell us. From Australia with 80 points. Uh, there's also an AMD version of the Rookie Rumble. In the lead, we find another Ukrainian overclocker, Kos S, uh, with 127 points. In mm -hmm. second place, the, the AMD winner from last round, NCNMD from Portugal, with 127 points as well. And then in third place, again, the, a man with an unpronounceable uh, nickname. Someone who loves AMD, obviously. <laughs> AMD, RTP, Jack, Ola, Peter, uh, with 109 points. He's from the USA. Excellent. Also going on at the moment, so the Novice Nimble number five, which is uh, also going. That one is going to last for a little bit longer. So the previous two were there's less than one week left now. But for the Novice Nimble, there's a, a whole month left still. Overclock.net in the lead with 241 points. Tech Lab OC team from Brazil with 180 points second. And uh, Overclock.pl team, uh, Portugal team at uh, 119 points. And I have to mention, Coquitland disappeared from the rankings nearly. Yeah, where is Coquitland? Coquitland, come back. You're going to have to <laughs> put a beep on that word. So it's it's pretty calm. Um, the overclocking season is sort of ending. You know, in, in this this last quarter, we'll have the Country Cup on HW both yeah. side, and then um, also the, the Galax overclocking carnival. To co the qualifiers are running right now. Um, there might be another competition upcoming for enthusiast overclockers, but that is still to be announced. What's uh, what's already announced though is the the Hyperx OC Takeover Season Three Qualifier, which will run um, from October 19 mm -hmm. until November 8. So it's a very short qualifier. You need Skylake processors, you need uh, Hyperx or Kingston memory, and there's three benchmarks in total. There's a max memory clock. There's XTU at five gigahertz, and there's a three mark 11 full out in physics. Okay. So the total price is going to be. 15k US dollar worth of pricing in the final. Yeah. The final is not going to be held at CES like oh, they did no? the previous two okay. years. The final will be held in uh, in California in the Hyper uh, HyperX uh, headquarters. Oh, nice. Yeah, in total, there are uh, 10 tickets for the finals. Yeah. So there is a two for two tickets for North America, two tickets for Latin America, two tickets for Europe, two tickets for Asia. One will go to Extreme Addict, who's won the 2014 edition as well as the the year before that. One ticket, and this is something we've nev never seen in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in live mm -hmm. final or lo live qualifiers before. One ticket will go to uh, as, a, as a wild card lucky draw to someone who finished in the top 20 but didn't make it to the in the first eight tickets. Well, that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, so you can finish 20th and still have a shot of going to the HyperX OT. So uh, we're HOT. submitting, right, no matter what? Yeah, you'll have to compete to, to, to get there. Make sure you get into the top 20, though. Of course. Yeah. Well, that's uh, very good news, actually. It's uh, very great to hear HyperX is back with a live competition. Yeah, and uh, there's a little twist I like as well. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so in the last previous week, some stuff also happened, especially last weekend. We're at the Rage in South Africa. Uh, so Dr. Wee's VV, Ni, also known as uh, Shock G, right? And um, Pepino from MSI were there to host an overclocking workshop. So Rage is the biggest LAN party in and gaming expo in South Africa. There's like thousands and thousands of people going there. It's pretty massive, a bit like PAX, I would say, actually. And uh, so they had a workshop there teaching visitors about overclocking. So they was mainly on water cooling, from what I saw. They were um, teaching CPU 
benching with uh, XTU, uh, which is, was in a similar fashion to what we've seen in the World Tour, so explaining you know ratios and things like that. And then they added also graphics, which was great, uh, using the GTX 950. Okay. So that was cool. That's the more low-end NVIDIA graphics card of the 900 series. Yeah. Well, like uh, Dr. Wee said, uh, they, um, they had a lot of fun actually doing the, the workshop. They were quite tired, of course, at the end, but uh, they were glad when people cheered up when there was some fire strike uh, hardware first play that got broken there. So always cool stuff. Um, another thing that happened in the previous week, which we didn't mention um, last week, uh, was in the Czech Republic, Franker and Overclocker there held a, a small uh, event with uh, local overclockers at the ASUS uh, offices over there. So they had a few of the latest gear, you know, so probably the Extreme board as well as the Hero, etc. And they, they were basically playing around. They had a bit of LN2. They had some water cooling mainly for the other guys since um, they were not yet uh, doing Extreme. And yeah, just having some small contests there among themselves and some prizes. Yeah, so. It's cool to see experienced overclocking getting out of their comfortable bubble or the comfortable space of their yeah. homes and actually go out and reach out to new people who might want to inspire to become an overclocker. Yeah, so if you have something going on around your place, um, send us some picture, a little text to tell us what, what happened and we'll just share it like this. Yeah, we'll put it up on the front page. S speaking of the front page. Yeah. <laughs> Splave broke the PiFast world record uh, last week yep. with the Core i7 uh, 6700K Skylake. I did some digging in the in the history of PiFast, and it was the first American overclocker mm -hmm. to break the PiFast record since uh, Kingpin in 2009. Wow! So no other American tried it. Well, probably tried it, but not succeeded since. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I, I assume a lot of people have tried to break it. It's, it's always difficult, mm. especially when you uh, when you take into account all the binning that goes into finding the right CPUs. For a, for a very long time, we had a lot of Taiwan overclockers like Andre Yang, like Hai Cookie, like Nick Shi, mm -hmm. who dominate the, the benchmark rankings. And they have sort of disappeared more towards the industry and development side. Andre Yang actually retired. So there's more room for other people to, yeah. to take the records. Um, yeah, so since Kingpin is the first American overclocker, he beat Dr. Weiss from yes. South Africa, who uh, who had uh, 9 seconds and 47, 9.47 seconds. And uh, and uh, Splave has 9.44 seconds. Like th 30 milliseconds faster. Yeah. Uh, pretty cool, actually. I was digging the world record stuff yeah. of PyFast as well, and I found two websites who are, who are now defunct, uh, the hexes, the pyfast.hexes.net and Ministry of Overclocking, which were two databases that existed before HWBot. And we did some digging on if we could find some world records yeah. older than that. And I posted some stuff on the forum. You'll have to check yes, out. It's a long story. Check out the forum. <laughs> Very long story. Um, cool stuff going on also. Um, so every week we release the Overclocker in Focus interview series. So a new episode every week. Um, so last weekend uh, we released uh, Franker's interview, which actually we just talked about before. So Overclocker from the Czech Republic. Um, probably in the top ranking of his country, actually. Uh, so check it out, very cool guy. And this week, we are going to release another one with Matose from Lab 501 in Romania. The infamous Go OC 2010 world champion. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he has also some cool things to say about overclocking. So make sure you check that out on Friday. Cool. All right. That's about it, I think, for today's show. Don't forget the live Q&A, October 18th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the OCTV channel. And hopefully we're going to have some cool guests this week to maybe talk like you mentioned, maybe HOT, maybe something else. Thanks for watching.